Okay, uh, honored on Master Week to have a six-time PGA Tour winner and a guy that played at Augusta professionally. Well, I think the first time maybe as an amateur. But yeah. Te- ten times finished in the top ten, three of them. Uh, had a couple other top 15 finishes. Hunter Mahan. Now, currently, his office is right down the hall from uh, Jason Witten. They're just taking Liberty Christian the whole new levels as a golf coach and a football coach. Hunter, what's going on, man? Not much, man. Thanks for having me. Do uh, you ever get do some free squats with uh, Jason? Yeah, I work. We work on his technique. It's a little flawed since he had stopped playing, but um, he's still a strong dude, and uh, um, he's a coach at heart, man. It's it's kind of funny. I've talked to him a couple times, and he's just a coach, and he loves it, and he's passionate about it, and uh, uh, he turned this program around pretty quickly. So uh, it's inspiring to see, and he's a great guy to kind of talk to, and he's open to that to to figure out how to make these kids just a little bit better. Talk to me about this week. Uh, Like in 03, you were an amateur. Did you qualify because you finished in the top two of the USAM? Is that how you got in? Correct. Yeah. Runner up in the USAM that year. Yeah. So, you know, as a, as a kid, obviously you were a highly touted amateur player played at a high level in college, but to get to go to Augusta in 03, before you became professional and became normal, yeah. What was that like driving down Magnolia Lane? You you go with your parents, you go with it. Who did you go with? Yeah, so I <laughs> I remember winning my semifinal match and that got me into Augusta. Like I knew that. And that was the first thing I thought of when when I won. It wasn't even, you know, cuz I actually won the US Junior and I had a chance to do um something only a Tiger has done, which is win the US Junior and the US Amateur. So I was on the precipice of that. But soon as I got as soon as I won my match, I knew like, oh, I'm in Augusta. Like it was wild. It was a wild just moment. And then uh, we went and played. As soon as you get that invite, or as soon as you know you're in the tournament, you're allowed to play kind of as much as you want. You just have to play with a member. Uh, so you can go call the club and say, Hey, I'd like to go. And they'll, they'll help you out and they set you up. And so, yeah, driving down for the first time with no fans, no one there, just like I don't even know what day it was. It might have been a Monday or something like that. Um, and it's just eerily quiet. It's just you see, you're feeling everything that you've seen on TV. Uh, now you're experiencing it. And this is when they had the old range. Um, it was wild. It was just such a, I mean, it was truly like a dream come true because everything that was fake is now real. And you're and you're seeing it and experiencing it. And then you get to see the golf course and, 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 and in 3D, right? You're not seeing it from a 1D, just from a flat perspective. You actually get to see the slopes and feel the slopes and see how the course is actually and how you're going to have to play it. It was really, um, and, and as an amateur there, I think that's so special. That is so yeah. unique. And that is a real honor because um, you really, you didn't qualify. You really had to like, I don't say you're not qualifying for it, but you're really earning your opportunity to play that. And there's only like 89 guys this year. And sometimes they've had like low eighties. And so it's really, really hard to get into this event. And so it was awesome. And I felt very proud to, be there as an amateur and play there as long as I did that that round that you played the practice round with the member did you approach that just like a normal round of golf or was like a practice do you remember what you shot no I don't remember I mean I just was like I mean I was just getting a feel for everything and so like the whole course is just sloped like every shot you're gonna have every kind of lie you're gonna have uphill downhill side hill um I mean you're just taking it all in that first time and you've got to figure out you're just figuring out angles. The course is so angular and how you need to attack certain pins and everything. So, I mean, I was hitting, I was kind of like, can I hit another ball here? And, and they were super nice, the staff, everybody. And I was getting tips from the caddies who were there because they've seen that place for a really long time. And that was fun. The caddies have amazing stories and, and, and you can get a lot of information from them. So um, I just was taking it all in that, that kind of that first round and experiencing and everything that I could that could maybe help me in the tournament, even though the course changes drastically, even from, from Monday of the week to the day, just to feel it and to understand what's actually going to happen um, when you start on Thursday. Why is the course so hard? Um, it's just, it requires your attention on every single shot, right? Like the greens are real slow, but you have to really put yourself in position. If you get out of position, it's really, really challenging just to get up and down. And big numbers can happen really fast there. 
And that's one of the things that you have to do there is just not three putt and not bake big numbers. If you do that, you're going to have your opportunities for birdies and even eagles. Um, but you just have to be, you just can't take a hole off. You have to be engaged on every single shot. And you can't get frustrated with the golf course because the wind swirls. Um, it, it does, you, you do want, um, you do want experience when you're sort of playing this golf course. Did you get nervous as you became a pro? I mean, you, 09, T10, 10, T8, 12, T12. T9, are you nervous in the mix or does it just become like a normal tournament as a professional after a while? Um, I think you're nervous the first time, but I think the more you play it, the more comfortable you get. It doesn't change a lot. The weather obviously is a little, you know, we've seen like Zach Johnson play there and it was freezing cold, right? And it, and it changed the course drastically but it is such a it's such a comforting feeling for a pro to play there because they only allow one person per player on the range like if you want your swing instructor then he can come up if you want your psychology well then they have to switch out if you want your physio they have to switch out so it's a very calm it's it's strange but it's a very calm place and you is, go to is like, that is that not normal at a even a u.s open or a british you can oh my gosh you want. on the u.s like it's your family, your cousins, your friends, your teachers, their teachers, swing putting, chipping guy. They're all on the range. There's a thousand people on the range and there's a thousand manufacturers and media. And it's like the great thing about Gus, it's so like defined and everyone's so respectful of everything. But it's just such a it really does feel like it's all about the players and the player experience. And so everything you're doing that week is sort of wrapped around that. And it's just like I said, it's eerily calm. Um, and it, it just feels like it's all about the golf and you're just, that's what you're there for. And I, I don't know. I just always, it, it just was such a relaxing place, even though, you know, you're at the masters, it felt therapeutic in a way. Cause it just felt like you didn't have to deal with a lot of stuff other than just playing and handling yourself. Did you get nervous more there than you did at other places <clears throat> or at least like off the first tee on Thursday? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I just was so happy. I just enjoyed the experience. It was so cool to be at Augusta and play in the Masters, um, these signature holes, those signature moments. I don't know. I just felt like I just enjoyed it so much. You know, everything, the part three contest, um, the specters, the people, you didn't have to worry about anything. There was not going to be any nonsense out there. There's not going to be any fans yelling or it's like everything was just controlled and it just, it felt easy in a way that all you have to do is just try to play your best and play a really good golf. Would you say it's, <clears throat> is it harder? Because I was looking at some of the scores beside, if you take the fall masters out, it's, it's kind of hovered between 10 to 13 under, which in this modern yeah. golf, <clears throat> I don't want to say it's us open, but it's not, these guys aren't shooting 24 under par. What, what makes it so difficult? Like, is it just the slopes? Is it your approach shots, which clearly is a big deal at Augusta? Is there a flat lie out there? There's not many. There's not many flat lies. I think what they do well there is they adjust year to year, right? And they have a lot of control over that golf course. Like, they have all the control of that golf course you'd ever want. So they're able to adjust it, add some he length here, move this back. You know, they have a great sense and a great feel of it because they host the same course, the same place over and over and over again. Yeah. So that helps a ton. If you're going to a different golf course like the USGA does, PGA, there's no rhythm and there's no feel to what's happening and how the weather is going to play into the golf course. So they can they can hit the gas on the greens when they want, which is obviously really challenging, right? Like you don't see great putters seem to win at Augusta, even though putting is so important. You just have to not three putt. You just have to not be a disaster on the greens. The course is all about ball striking. And now it's becoming much more of a bomber's golf course where you really got to hit it high and far to carry. There's a bunch of carries there over these little mounds um, on a lot of these par fours where if you do carry it and then it's going to bounce on a flat surface other than bouncing into, into a hill, which then equates to 25, 30 yards. And so, um, and like I said, they can still hit the gas on these greens into where if, if you, you can, where you hit your second shots is, I mean, we're talking about two to three yard gaps. Like this is, I've got to land it in this area or it's going to hit a hill and roll down and now I'm going to be struggling for par. But if I hit it on top of there and it rolls over, I've got a great look for birdie. So 
it's just the difference between where you hit your approach shots on a lot of these holes is the difference between a five foot putt and a 30 foot, 30 footer open over a four foot mound. Would the average like five to 10 handicap have any freaking shot on those greens? Cause they always say they're like the hardest greens in America. No, they would have no, like, I, I mean, I'm coaching in high school here and the kids three put all the time. Like <laughs> that's like five, 10 handicappers are going to three put a lot. And they're going to, is, is it because they're like concrete? Lot. They're just super fast or they're undulated is the combination of it all. A combination of it all. They're super fast, which is one thing, but the greens, like the course sits like on a hill, like from the first T eight, you know, first T 18 green, it just goes like this down to 12. Like it's steep, steep, steep. And that's how the whole golf course, it's oddly in a bowl and everything goes down to 12. And so even when you think you have a flat putt, it's still going to break a lot, right? And so amateurs just aren't used to playing three, four, five feet of break and having the ball and, and just thinking that I've got a 12-footer and I just need to two putt it. I just need to get it around there and give it a chance but not be super aggressive there's not many aggressive putts you have there's not really many flat greens 12 ironically is about the flattest green you're gonna have there but it's um you know you can get at it at certain times and certainly give you that opportunity i guess though which is so great there's a stretch on that back nine on sunday right where you can get to that golf course and you have to make hay when you when you have that opportunity did you ever have a chance on these on your top tens to like legitimately win on the weekend yeah, I think I, I mean I think I had a uh, teeing off on Sunday. I had a chance to win. I needed to play really well, and I just didn't get it done. Um, but I, I felt like I was there, and you have those opportunities on the back on Sunday, and you got to take advantage of those. I mean, the best. Um, I remember playing with Freddie one year, and that was my favorite time with Freddie Sunday at, at the Masters. It was just so cool, and so um, he's the best guy to play with uh, in a stressful environment because he is he's sort of just like this you know, in your read, calm, confident coach on the sideline, just doing his thing. And, 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 and Freddie has just this way about him that nothing seems too big. You know, you played in the era before we dive into some of the favorites and just what we're thinking this weekend in peak tiger. I mean, when you first got on tour oh, in yeah. the two thousands and, and obviously once Phil got over the hump and became an all time great starting with tiger. I mean, you see him today, he's smiley. He's definitely a different person in his late forties. Oh, yeah. guy You saw, I remember texting with you years ago when it was like COVID shut down, just watching all these YouTubes. I mean, how much better was he than everyone else? Like do you, what, what's your, when you, when I, when you close your eyes and think like your tiger story, being around him, playing with him in his heyday, what stands out to you about tiger Woods? Um, it's crazy to think, but he was the best at everything. Like there was like, um, he was winning tournaments playing. Okay. And and that's guys whole dream and their life was to win a PJ tour event. And it wasn't like he was toying with anybody. He just was like, he was just on a different planet of work ethic and desire and what he was willing to do to win. But like his, like he was the best driver of the golf ball. He was the best putter and his short game was ri ridiculous. And what you have to do is hit your long irons well. And, and we'd never seen anybody be able to hit three irons as far and as high as he could. And so when you go to Augusta and you go to these major type places and he's just playing a different type of golf when he's hitting these five and long irons straight up in the air and just landing it perfectly soft on the green with incredible distance control. Um, Oddly, his margin of error was so much bigger than everyone else's because he could get up and down if he had a few squirrely drives. Um, but he just was – and then he was tougher than anybody else. I mean, he just was mentally just in a way that you couldn't really understand because it meant more to him than, than anyone else. But I'd never seen anybody – and you look at highlights of him hoisting three irons and four irons and five irons, so much higher than anybody else's. Um, because he had so much power and his technique was so good. But when you, when you take that and you take that to really tough golf courses, um, the advantage is just, you know, um, what we've learned is that ball striking and iron play is what's going to separate you from being a really, really great player. And it takes you from course to course, country to country. It doesn't really matter. Um, and the way he was able to do those things and hit those irons and the way it, the sound it made, the lack of, it just looked and felt and, and, 
the way he can shape it just slightly. Um, it was unlike anything we'd ever seen before. Guys would struggle to just get up and to, to, to win events. And it was just like he was he was such in a rhythm and just toying with everybody else a lot of the time. The NBA season is in full swing. And when I can't get enough of the action on the court, I spice things up betting on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Right now, new customers bet five bucks and get $150 instantly in bonus bets. North Carolina listeners, don't forget, DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code JOHN, J-O-H-N. New customers can bet five bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code JOHN. The crown is yours. You know, the thing I, I've always said about him, and listen, obviously he's had a crazy life. I mean, an insane life. But he said it today, like, I just love golf. Yes. To be as rich as he is, to be as injured as he is, it's like to still want to some grind. It's I, I just think 99% of people in his shoes – with his resume, his money, his now family, I just don't think would continue to do it. And I, I just admire his drive, which, like you said, was on the forefront for 20 years for guys like you just watching. It was it was unprecedented. I, I don't know if we'll ever quite see anything like it again. No, it's a, it's a um, like you said, it's a pure joy to the simplest things. I think he loves he loves just the feel and you know of a pure strike the high draw the manipulation of hit it left and right the feel like of hitting a perfect wedge from like 60 yards and, and watching it spin and the control that he has he loves the simplicity of the things it's sort of like brady you can't like thursdays and, and saturdays and sundays you gotta like hitting balls at home at like 7 a.m and just feeling the way the ball rolls off the putter like he loves all those things it, it's his passion it's his drive it's his work ethic he just loves all those things and i don't think people even understand what what he has to do now just to play around the golf i mean it's Crazy. hours of warm-up and work and then it's post work um and he's willing to do it which is crazy he's almost 50 and he's been doing and i mean the last what do you want in 2019 so like the last five years of his has been such a struggle for him just to get on a golf course and play four rounds and it, it doesn't phase him he's just like well, this is what I have to do. I have to add this hour of stretching and, and ankle mobility work. That's what I'm going to do. Do I have to wake up at four? Okay. Three, whatever. It doesn't matter because I want to be in that first tee uh, competing because that's what he loves. I know you're tight and for a long time with uh, Mickelson, who, you know, I, I following his scores at live these last couple of years hasn't been the prettiest thing. But last year at the Masters, I mean, shit, the guy made a run. He finished second. <laughs> so <laughs> what? why – we know Tiger's success here, but I, Phil's not far behind him as a guy who's yeah. very comfortable. Is it just his touch? Obviously, he's one of the most talented players yeah. of all time. Is this just one of those courses when you have the course knowledge like those two guys, it's such a big advantage? Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. Um, and Phil loves – he's like a very visual person, and he's an artist, right? Tiger, Tiger's way more of a technician, right? Once he got a lead of a major or a tournament, he just wear you down. There's going to be no mistakes. There's going to be irons and three with Phil's like, you know, do you think I could skip this across the water and then get up on the green and then roll? Right. Like, I think I can do that. Right. And, and like bones is historically like, no, we don't need to skip the ball off the water. We can just lay up because you're a great wedge player. Right. Phil's always seeing the challenge and, and the fun in the game. And Augusta provides that it's a, you know, you, you're going to hit so many shots that week. And Phil loves that. He loves the, the, the artistry of what he can do and what he needs to do. And that course gives you everything. I mean, you went at high, low fade, draw, whatever. And so he loves that there. Um, and it's a great, like I said, he's bombing it now. And that's a course that lends you to give you that opportunity a lot and kill those par fives. And he knows, he knows those greens better than anybody in history. Um, so when he's there, he's, he's thinking to himself, I'm ahead of these guys because I know what everything's going to do. I've played here in every condition and he's always believing that if I can just get a rhythm with my swing, because he always feels rhythmic, like he can't, it's not really a technician, but if it gets in that rhythm, watch out because he's going to go at every flag because he feels that confident and he's going to be really, really comfortable around the greens. 
Yeah, let's let's go through some of the top guys this week. I mean, Rory, he needs this to complete the career Grand Slam. Last year, obviously, was devastating. He missed the cut. He had not been playing well, and then he goes and sees Butch. And last week, I don't know if you saw some of his stats, his proximity to the hole from like yeah. 125 to 200 was dramatically better with every club. So now I'm thinking, I don't know. I'm going to throw a little cash on Rory. It feels like he's bound to win it. The confidence you've been around Butch, just the mental positivity he can throw into your head. It feels like Rory's a big psychological. If he's in the right space, watch out. What are your thoughts on Rory McIlroy? And do you think it's inevitable? Because for some guys, this isn't inevitable. No, I, I don't think it's inevitable. Um, I think I think what I think what Butch will do is give him a little bit of structure, right? And he'll say, "Okay, this is these are the few things that you're going to need." Um, Butch has a few ideals that he really likes and he believes in the golf. Scene. So um, I think he's going to f- help him with those things and give him a f- like, give him just like play in this area, right? And just like structure, structure, structure to a swing. And that should give him some confidence. Um, I do like him this week because he did play last week. So I think Rory kind of is going to feed off of that a lot. And I don't think he's going to be talked about much. I think it's going to be a lot of shuffler. It's going to be a lot of like Fino, um, you know, Xander people like. I love Xander this week. Um, There's going to be a lot of things. Willie Z, there's going to be a lot of players, a lot of people talking. And I think Rory, especially after like the live stuff and him, you know, having a press conference every single week, I think he can slide underneath that radar a little bit and just kind of play and not have to worry about much. And so I think that's going to benefit him a lot. I do expect him. I, I think he's going to play actually really, really good this week. And it might come down to just, you know, putting for him. You know, I think I like you. I think he's going to hit it great, and he's going to play really, really well. Really, really well. Is he going to find that touch around the greens with the putter? You know, we'll have to wait and see. Is it fair to say that the draw players have an advantage at this course? Well, like uh, Ron won last year, and so he, he's a big cutter. Um, DJ's won before. You know. Yeah, I, I don't because I think these guys can hit so high now; they can take a lot of stuff out of play. You can hit a three wood; that's going to be much easier to draw. So, um, I, I don't think so. Like a guy like Victor, to me, Hovland is a guy I really like this week. His iron play; I mean, he can just beat. Like I think he, he'll if he gets in a good rhythm on Thursday, I think he's just going to slowly climb up the leaderboard. And I think he'll end up being there on Sunday and have a really good chance to win. I think he's this golf course is all about your irons and control. And he can do that as good as anybody. It's funny. You know, we talk a lot about like Scotty Scheffler's now getting the tiger treatment with odds. Let's face it. In like 2002, (laughs) people weren't talking about like gambling on golf like they do now, but we all just assumed tiger was going to win. It is pretty crazy that he's like two, three, four to one. I mean, yeah. Hunter, he's four to one this week, and it doesn't even seem that crazy. He's like, yeah, if he puts well, he's probably going to win by four. Uh, you're a Dallas guy. He's a Dallas guy. Uh, you're, If you know him at all, what's your thoughts on just watching him play as a pro? It, it seems kind of crazy because the guy is freaking incredible. He's, I, you know, I, we talked about him a couple of years ago when we were like, is he going to hang around, right? Like, is this sort of, but it's, the reality is he's, the best iron player in the world. And even though he had, you know, struggles with this putter, he was finishing top fives and he was still the best player in the world um, during those weeks. So um, he's got the confidence in the putter now. Um, And he's very just, he does a great job. I think of resetting himself like week after week. Right. And he's always sort of tinkering and trying to make his swing better. Um, He doesn't seem to get caught up in, in, the tiger hysteria and trying to be anything other than Scotty Scheffler. And there's a simplicity to that, that really works in his favor. It would be, you know, four to one is high. It's hard to put money on him, money on him to think that he's going to win because he's been on such a here. Can you really just continue that over and over again? I wouldn't think so. You think he's just going to miss a few putts, uh, have one bad day of irons, but man, he is, he is so good. And he said he's just good, good at everything. There's just not really a weakness to his game. He has great touch, great feel. He's got a great caddy. Uh, he's already won here before, right? So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him to win. But boy, I mean, are we really entering that category where he's going to be just top ten every single major for the next ten years? I mean, I don't know about that. 
if he were to win this one, it'd be safe to say he might win two or three majors this year because it'd be oh, like, for sure, yeah. he'd be out the gates. Well, we thought that about John Rahm last year once he won this tournament. And he's a guy, I don't know if you saw the quote. He's like, yeah, I wish, you know, Liv, maybe we should go to 72 holes. Because I would imagine, you know, he's an old school grinder, competitor. Yeah. Probably doesn't feel as sharp coming into this. He he's he feels kind of like the anti Kepka who took everything seriously. Kepka only took these four tournaments seriously. And I'm I'm kind of off him just because I will that that comment to me told me a lot of like, I wonder if he feels as great as he did last year when he was winning tournaments, playing in normal four round events, and he doesn't feel quite as sharp coming to this bad boy. It's a great point. I saw that quote too, and I was like, and, and I I mean, I mean, I talked to the guys that live about uh, broadcasting and and 54 holes is not like that is their plan. Like that is not something movable. They don't feel like that is anything no. like that's not an option. So like a guys weekend trip. Yeah. So that's really weird for me that he actually was like made that public and said that um, a little surprising to say the least. I, I don't disagree. Like he's, these guys want to, they want that rhythm. There's a cadence of playing professional golf four rounds, a cut and all those things. So maybe he does feel a little bit like honeymoon's over and now we're grinding and now we're playing week after week. And he's like, golly, it's just three days. I got to get ready for a major four days. I wonder if he's thinking about that and it's running through his head a little bit more than he might have thought that it would have impacted him getting win a major because now, now it's entering his time and his season. And there's a lot of golf that he's going to be playing at a high level and, and, Maybe he doesn't feel like he's getting that competitive spirit out there. I'm not sure. Uh, only he can answer that. How can Kepka not really give a shit about tournaments and then just flip the switch and win majors and compete in majors? Is that the craziest thing you've ever seen? Yes. I don't think it, we've never seen a career like this. I don't know how to like, I, you know, I was looking at like uh, major winners of his caliber, meaning like guys who have won five plus. They've all won, uh, you know, a ratio of about, Five to one, meaning five tournaments, five normal tournaments to like one major. Like it's a big gap, right? Uh, Phil's got like six majors and like 40 plus wins, right? He's like eight yeah. to one. Tiger's got like, you know, there's at least a five to like a 10 to one gap. He's like, like, like two to one. Like it's just <laughs> weird. It's like, how do you win that many tournaments, have majors when you have like nine or 10 tournaments won? It's just weird. It's, it's very unique and very strange. Um, there's really no, I, I don't understand it either. Because he's so good that you would think he at least won 20 times, more of like a Dustin Johnson type career, more of a Rory. But he actually just hasn't played that. He put, spent a lot of time uh, on the European tour, kind of grinding out there and figuring out kind of who he was. Um, but he does not seem to be uh, deterred by anything. His, his majors last year were incredible, he was such a stud in, in the Masters and in the PGA. Um, so I. I it doesn't make any sense to me that he can just flip a switch from like Doral playing terrible in the, you know, for two days and then come here and, and be sharp. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. It did feel like last year he was playing well. He was winning live events. His confidence was like, he's like, I'm feeling like Brooks again. Health is great. So I, do I think he's going to flip the switch? I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. Cause last year he, he, he did like last year. It was like, Oh, he's back. And this year, I, we haven't heard from him in like months, right? So, not really sure. He's not someone that I'm thinking about today to win the Masters, you know. Yeah, I, as, as from a gambling standpoint, it's hard not to sprinkle a little on him because you always just get you'll be pissed at yourself Saturday. You look up, but also a couple years ago, he missed the cut. He was battling injuries. Two guys, yeah, I, I know my two favorites this week, not necessarily to win, but that I just think uh, auto top ten bets and auto guys to be in the mix are Hideki and Xander. I mean, they, they are playing yeah. fantastic. They're comfortable here. Xander's, you you know, Hideki's won a major before. Yeah. Xander feels like he has a million top fives in majors. Yeah. And it, a little like Rory, I don't necessarily know the ma Masters. Inevitably, he's going to win a big tournament if, you, yes. if you're in the mix this often, right? What are your thoughts no, no, on no. Xander? You ever overlap with him? He's a little younger, but. Yeah, I, we played um, in Charlotte a few years ago. I, I love him. I think his game is, I... I mean, he, he hits these just high, beautiful draws. And his swing, like, what I like about players is when their swings sort of match the ball flight. And whenever I watch Xander play, it's just, like, this poetry. Because it's just so, it's exactly, it should do exactly what his swing says. And he does it so consistently. 
And I mean, it's so high. And when you play majors to hit it high and have control and where you can really control where that ball's landing and where it's going to hit. And, you know, like I said, ball striking really, really matters. Um, he's finished top five in these majors and runner ups because of his ball striking and, and, and he just doesn't put himself in danger. And so I like you, I love him this week. I don't see him not playing well. Cause it just, to me, and I'm, it's an assumption, but I believe it's true. Be true. He walks on that golf course and is really comfortable. Like he can just see all his shots and how he wants the ball to come down. He's plenty long enough. Um, to me, it's just, he, he's going to get out there. It's just going to be, those critical moments that's all it comes down to it's winning a major in these things it's just a putt or two here he's been there he's lived it um i think he's gonna be as motivated and as jacked as anybody to have this this sort of opportunity you got any good hideki stories I- i'm fascinated by that guy the one arm finishes and balls 320 <laughs> he won at riv he's like yeah i didn't even think i played that well he shot like 62 you know you're just like this guy's a trip man he's just just a big time talent yeah, he lives um, in Orlando, and I've been there a few times on the range with him, working with, like Sean Foley and stuff. And and um, he just he's got his crew with him um, uh, from Japan, and he just he goes out to the range and just bangs balls and bangs balls and bangs balls and hits some more balls and just he's just a machine, right? It's that Japanese culture of just grinding over and over and over again. Um, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't know much about him. Nobody really does. It's just, you know, a cultural thing. But he's a machine out there. And, um, you know, it's a fascinating lifestyle that he has because he's such a superstar over there. Yeah. And I think it's a reprieve for him to come over here and live in this, you know, live in Orlando, this little tiny golf course, and just play. I think it's very relaxing for him. So um, he is a... You know, it always feels like he's on the verge of superstardom, right? Like I'm thinking, like this is could be the year where he develops into a top five player for the next five years, but then he sort of kind of goes away. And so there's an inconsistency there with him that's actually sort of exciting because he can jump up and win any major in any tournament. Yeah. He has a, that that skill set. His putting's a little, his, his putting always feels like it holds him back because it's just it's just not fluid. It's not pretty. It's very looks analytical and technique-y, and it's like that's just not how you're gonna be consistent over a long run, but man, his physical tools are absurd and him stepping on the golf course to win is, is no joke. You mentioned fee. Now one, one thing, when I play out at TPC, I, sometimes I will be on the range about to go play and I'll see a guy, Max or Tony, or one of those guys yeah. at the back of the range. And I always kind of keep track when you turn around eight, nine, and you can see them up there putting Yeah, Tony on Saturday. I, I play, I teed off at like eight 30. When I teed off, he was back there putting. When I came up on eight, he was still back there putting. And when I finished, he was just going to play. Now, obviously, mm. as pro golfers, you guys work really hard, but he's a guy that's had success here, and, and the putting has just been an absolute disaster. Yeah. But from a ball striking standpoint, I mean, how many guys can hang with that dude? Yeah, I, I saw this morning. He's like, you know, seventh overall in ball striking, strokes gained. Um, solid, not even where he, he could really be at his best, but his putting is like 160 something, right? And that's, um, it's a draining aspect of your game, right? When you're hitting it so good and something's letting you down consistently. And it's something that's not, it's, it's not in your face putting, right? It's not obvious. It's, it, it's just, it's artistic, right? All the great putters, a lot of great putters are terrible ball strikers, you know, put it bluntly, you know, because it's different. It's like a different part of your brain. So you have to see it different. And so it's hard for guys who are very technique driven in the in the ball strike, which you need to be, because you're not going to get lucky and, and be flowy in ball striking, to then take that and and not use the technique for putting because it doesn't work that way. Uh, you have to be way more artistic, and especially at Augusta, where you really have to see this ball coming in from different angles and and, and different you know speed variations to see where it's going to go in, and and it's not easy, and so. Um, I'm sure they were working on, you know, touch and feel and like, how's the ball going to roll into the hole and how, what are, what are things that we're going to need to focus on that week to make putts? Cause they know, you know, it's hard to know the problem and, but it's a hard fix. It really, really is. Cause you can do, you can feel great. And then that tournament rolls around and those green suites go up to like 13, 14 and the ball gets a little bouncy and all of a sudden your confidence is wavering. Right. And, and you don't want it to waver on them back nine and i guess that's going to be tough to overcome but 
you know, he's also a, a player who's due to have a great week. Well, let's face it. W- w- would you agree that putting is probably the one, whether you're a 10 handicap, a five handicap, a pro golfer, you three putt that first green, all of a sudden now you're really rattled. Yeah. I don't care who you are. It, it can throw you off because you could, you could hit a bad drive. The next hole hit a good one, but putting all of a sudden you start yeah. freaking out over a five footer. It's we all have the same nerves standing over a putt. Some of the best <laughs> shots you've ever hit come after some of your worst, right? There's like, yeah. it's like, that's all right. I want to just like, I know I got something I can see and I hit it up there and you know, so yeah, especially there putting can really, you know, it can wear everything else down. It can be an anchor. Um, and it's a real challenge for all the players out there because they're not all bad putters uh, by any means. But we're talking about a razor thin margin of error here in a winning a major. And they know that once you get close there and you get inside about 10 feet, you got to make your putts. You got to make the ones that really, really matter and, and they count. And uh, so, you know, all the players know that. They know they got to do that and they got to figure it out. So um, Tony's a guy that just a little bit of confidence and a little bit of rhythm and a little bit of touch there. It could go a long way for him. We talk a lot about 12, 13, obviously 15, 16. For me, 9 and 18. I mean, 9, hitting it down that tree line, then getting down there and then going uphill is always really cool. And 18, for us that will probably never play there, that shot looks like insanely intimidating. Like 99% of decent golfers are hitting a freaking tree. Uh, mm. for, for you, what what beside the super famous holes is just a hole that like, God, I love that hole at Augusta. Oh man. Um, there's so many, I think, um, the roars at Augusta are what excite me. Like 16 is such a cool hole because there's that, because it's funny how, um, you know, you know, what's coming there. There's no really surprises there. You know, you know where the pin's going to be on Sundays, you know, it's going to be that back left plan. And so that was, was a fun hole because hole in ones are just, it feels like they're going to happen that day. You know, there's going to be a couple of them in the, and just the fans are all lining up. And, and I always like that transition. I was like, my favorite spot on that golf course was middle fairway on 15 because I got 17 to the right. I can see all the way, I all the way down to 13 and 14. I can see what's happening on the green on 15 and I can see 16 and you can even kind of, and you can kind of hear all these things happening around you. And you're at this kind of peak point on the golf course, um, looking down at that green the water, you know, the water and the way the green is shaped. And, you know, gosh, if I hit this a little long, it's going to hit that down slope. And then I could go in the water on 60. And it's just, to me, that was always my favorite, um, one of my favorite plates there. And then the T on 13, where you're playing in this massive tournament. There's no one on the green on 11. There's no one on the green on 12. And there's no one on the T on 13. And you're just, you're just by yourself and your players and your caddies. And you guys can just talk and, um, and to be in such a huge, huge moment and a huge situation and there's no one around you is really trippy. And it's not like golf or it's not like really sports, right? It's, there's not a, there's no yelling. There's no people. There's no, you know, you, the man or get in the hole. There's none of that there. And so it's this oddly peaceful therapeutic place where you're just at the pinnacle of your career in a way and in the pinnacle of golf and you're just, like I said, it always feels, the tournament always feels like it's about the players and that event and those kind of moments always, I always can feel that um, at those times. Do roars echo out there? Like, can you feel it? Oh yeah. my gosh. On Sunday, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like I said, it's just because you know what's kind of coming back down on Sunday, what's going to happen, where those, the, 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 um, the pins are going to be, the opportunities for guys, guys ahead of you that are making a charge, guys behind you that are maybe missing a putt. It's like, everything that goes around there it, it's really really cool and it's just it's just like i said it's all about the players in the field that week and if and you can feel it and it's so exciting because not many majors where there's eagles and things are changing on the board so quickly and so fast um and so you can you have such like that another instinct there and you can kind of hear everything and kind of feel what's happening around you uh, which is really really neat because the course isn't that huge it's not that big you know holes are kind of stacked up with one another and that's sort of the charm of it and it's so that's what makes it so fun is that um you can feel everything around you you don't really have to even look at the leaderboard because you kind of know who's hunter man thinks sunday afternoon getting the green jacket um 
I would say, you know, I, I think Patrick Cantley, I would watch him. I, I'm going to go with Hovland, though. I'm going to go with Victor Hovland, I think, is going to have the week this week. But, you know, I'm going to hedge and, and the other guys as well. But I'm going to okay. go with Victor. I think he's due. I think he's due. Okay, we'll end on this. T- Tiger said he's feeling good. Some reports yesterday, striping the ball. Obviously, he can break that cut streak. would be his 24th, I think, straight. Yeah, twenty third. Tiger, top twenty. I mean, it's just it's it's because the weather is supposed to be a little rainy, but it's hot rain, like the southern hot rain, not freezing cold like last year. Does Tiger still have one in him? You know, he's talk he's talking it up. I always want to believe, but I got to be realistic. <laughs> not to win, no. but just how cool would that to, be? Just if he was just to, playing decent to compete, to compete, and to be there on Sunday. Um the weather looks great. Like you said, Thursday, maybe a little bit of rain. If he's on the right side of that. Um, Doesn't that help him a little? I don't know. Like the hill, the, I, I don't know with his ankle and everything. That course is so oh, yeah. hilly. It's uphill. It's downhill. I mean, you are, your shins are fried after that week. I mean, it's just, all, I mean, it's a, it's, it's not a long course and it's, and it's pretty efficient in a lot of areas. There's some walks back, but it's not, you're not, it's not a tough, it's not a tough walk. But it's it's like a you don't tired, but your your body just aches a little bit, and your shins and everything because you're going uphill so much and then downhill. So I don't, you know, he can make you believe. I mean, anything like he's he's got one more charge in him. I, I do think he's putting everything he has into this week. It's just, um, you know, he's been through so much. Like his body has just physically been through so much. It's hard to imagine that he can play well for four days. That he can actually st- stand in there and play well for four days. I mean, it's been five years since he won, and and you could see it on Thursday. I was watching him going. He's really comfortable. He's striping it. This this is going to be interesting. I you know you just haven't seen him play in a really long long time for decent rounds of golf. It's just his body is just so broken down. But if anyone can can put something together and make the cut. Um, I, I do think he can do that, and I do think he will. I'm, I would say he's going to make the cut, and you know he might have a might have an unbelievable nine holes on on Saturday or something like that to peak in the top twenty. Okay, we'll end it on this. Now you're a coach. Now we got a lot of people that listen. Handicaps, probably a lot of probably a lot of well over tens. Uh, one piece of advice could be something general to just improve your game, improve your scoring, to just make golf a little easier that you see a lot of amateur golfers not do well? Well, one, they can't putt. So if you can not three putt, like if you want to make your scores better and you want to go from 85 to 78, number one thing is stop three putting. So that's no fun and people won't do that. So whatever. But that's how, the would, first how do thing you even you do. do that? Do you have practice putting? Is that a thing? Of course. You just practice putting. You practice putting. Um, Match your stroke up with the putter. Um, you can even go, you know, go left arm high, Lily Z or whatever, and get that thing up. Whatever you can do consistently, but have good touch, right? If you just have good feel and good touch, hit a lot of long putts, different different length putts. But I think on the swing, most people that I've seen, especially watching these kids play, is like they 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 stand up through the shot. So if you can stay in your posture and make a big turn. More and you stay in your posture, it'll help you rotate through the shot and be more consistent. Almost everybody pops out of it, and as soon as you pop out, it's over. It's like there's right and there's left, and they're both in play now. You can stay in your posture. If you look at all the best players, they do a great job of staying in their posture, lower bodies. You know, it's just there's an angle there with your legs and your back, and you stay in and it helps you rotate and you fire through, right? Look at Dustin Johnson swing or Rory's or whatever. But um, if you can just do that, because rotation is a huge part of the swing, and most amateurs can't rotate for nothing. Some of them are just physically not capable. Yeah. But that's something that almost everyone does. They just pop out of it, and all of a sudden their arms are, you know, are flinging at the ball. Be an athlete. Just try. <laughs> just try. try. Just, <laughs> golf is an athletic <laughs> sport. Okay, Hunter. I, I really appreciate it. Enjoy the Masters, and uh, thanks for coming on, man. Enjoy Scottsdale. Thanks, man. I will. Talk to you soon. Tell Jason we say hi. Of course.